Welcome back to The Joy of Vinyl. I'm Rick Coast. 186,000 miles a second. That's how fast the speed of light is. It's also the speed limit of the universe. Now, physics tells us nothing can exceed that limit. So theoretically, if we do, if we had a ship fast enough, weird things will happen. Things like time travel and perhaps even stranger occurrences that we haven't even thought of. Here's another number for you. Zero. Zero dB. It's also a threshold of sorts, and it's directly related to digital sound processing. Think of it as a limit, like the speed of light. Push the volume past zero dB, or past 100%, and bad things will happen, like clipping or earaches. If you've ever seen a sound meter pushed into the red, then it's time to scale back that volume. Just as we hope to one day achieve the speed of light, or even attempt to get past it, Audio engineers, music companies, and artists sometimes try to get as close to zero dB as possible. Why? Well, to be louder than everyone else. There was a time way back when vinyl was not only king, but the only kid on the block who mattered, that jukebox owners across the country stacked to them with seven inch singles for the pleasure of their patrons. If you work for a record company and want a single to stand out when someone hears it, what do you do? Well, you make it louder. You want to get those feet tapping all the way to the record store. The same desire applied when that enterprising record salesman entered the office of a radio station's program director. You want the record to catch their attention, to be louder than everyone else or everything else. You want it to be hot. There were limits to this, though. Being vinyl and an analog format, you could only force it to a certain limit before it ceased to be music and, well, became unplayable. The dynamic range can only be pushed so far. Now, when speaking in musical terms, the dynamic range is the range between the softest notes and the loudest notes. When recording, it's the range between the bottom point of a waveform and the top point, the top point being the loudest part. Now, push the top too much, and you hit that red zone. Now, if you were a record producer back at the start of the loudness war, you urged the audio engineer to get as close to that red zone as possible. And that's the war the industry fought for years. And then came digital. Let's take a step back for a moment and talk about decibels, otherwise known as dB. Not to confuse this with the, the zero decibel threshold that I mentioned earlier at the start of this episode, when talking about dynamic range, we as humans have a range of around 0 to 140 decibels. Now, the 0 doesn't represent a lack of sound. It only means we can't hear sounds below it. A vinyl record's dynamic range flutters around 65 dB. Now, when digital music entered the scene and CDs took advantage of it, their dynamic range exceeded vinyl by another 30 decibels, which means louder music. Now, push the volume on your stereo to 10 and the CD version of ACDC's Highway to Hell will achieve a volume way louder than its vinyl record counterpart. The dynamic range is still the same though, right? Well, not so fast. With digital music, there came the tendency to push the envelope with dynamic compression. Now, this basically attempts to squash the waveform by boosting the lower frequencies and keeping the higher frequencies, or top of the waveform, at its highest level. This reduces the dynamic range. If you compress it enough, what once looked like a standard waveform will pretty much look like a brick wall. Now, the technology behind it was actually called digital brick wall limiters. What was once a perfectly acceptable piece of music, complete with highs and lows, suddenly became, well, a wall of loudness. The tap of a cymbal was given the power to compete with the bluesy wail of Angus Young's guitar. The entire song is pushed as close as possible to that zero dB limit. The loudness wars pretty much went from being fought with cap guns to lasers, literally. When taken to its extreme, dynamic compression can ruin a piece of music. It doesn't mean it has no place in music mastering. It most certainly does, even with vinyl record mastering. Say you've just recorded an incredible piece of jazz, but the drummer's brush taps are exceptionally soft. A gentle application of low-level compression can bring those brush strokes up to a level where the listener can enjoy them. 
Now, the trick is to do it without being a distraction. It's an art and another tool for audio engineers to use when working their magic. Now, there's one sure path to lazy ambivalence, and it only has three ingredients. First, it has to be, well, easy. Second, it has to save time. And third, it has to make money. Now, this recipe has led to disaster in some modern remastered vinyl records. Now, suppose you're a record executive who wants to squeeze a few extra dollars out of a digital recording, no matter how overcompressed it is. In that case, you might decide to release a special remastered version on 180 gram vinyl. Do you go back to the original master tapes or do you simply grab the same digital master used to make C this um, used to make the CD or the streaming files? Remember those three ingredients? Huh? Will people notice? Well, maybe, but you can always slap a big bold hype sticker on it with the words audiophile quality 180 gram pressing remastered from the original source. You notice how the sticker conveniently left out the word digital in original source? As Thomas Edison is quoted as saying, people will hear what you tell them to hear. Thomas Edison said something else too. He urged everyone to subscribe to this channel. You can do so by clicking the button. Uh, the button. That's right, where's the... Oh, there it is. You can click the button and you can subscribe to the show. So until next time, please take care of yourself and enjoy your records.